Okay, so let's talk about choosing your paint. Now, choosing the paint is probably going to be one of the most important decisions that you make during this entire process. And I'm going to give you a couple of recommendations on how you should go about it. So, you have paint manufacturers, right, like Benjamin Moore, Sherwin Williams, PPG, Farrow and Ball. And what they do is they create what are called lines. And most of paint companies create a lot of different lines. Now, so for example, Benjamin Moore makes Aura, which would be considered to be their ultra premium line. They make Regal Select, which would be considered to be their premium line. Their Ben, which is kind of the economical line. And then there's the Super Spec, so not the Ultra Specs, but the Super Spec, which is their contractor grade. Each one, of course, is better than the other one, but the farther you go down the list, you know, from Aura is going to be much more expensive than the Super Spec paint. Okay? So, but in my experience, if you choose one of the two top lines of the manufacturer that you're thinking about going with, you can't go wrong. If you find that those are, are just too expensive, then you're going to have to move down. And this is where you kind of run into issues as far as I'm concerned, because to me, there's nothing worse than using a shitty paint, right? Um, so if you can afford it, or if you're on a kind of a strict budget, my focus would be put the money into the paint if you can. Um, and the only thing you can really kind of do is just do the best. What I wouldn't recommend is buying the contractor grade, and I wouldn't recommend buying the economical grade, but that kind of puts you into the upper levels of the price range. So you're just going to kind of have to do the best you can. Now, as, as far as picking a, a manufacturer goes, now that could be done a number of ways. You either, you either you trust me, or you if you have an interior designer or a contractor or a painter that you know that you really trust, then use what they recommend, you know, what they're really happy with. You should have really great success with that. Now, another way to go about this is you could get more technical about it. Um, you could look, now the, the Paint Quality Institute, there are two major recommendations was one, check to see if there's quality ingredients in the paint and, and the one to check for is titanium dioxide. So titanium dioxide is, is very opaque, it, it helps with coverage, so, and it's considered a high quality ingredient that goes into a paint. Uh, number two, Look for high solids in the paint. So all the manufacturers should have a PDF of the, of the line that you're looking at, and it should, it should note the amount of solids. So if you're down to about 30% solids, it's usually kind of an inferior paint. Uh, I use paints that run from about 35 to 45% solids. That, so that's another way to approach this. Sometimes uh, clients, I have clients out, I live in Seattle, and some areas, uh, if I go to the outskirts of, of, of Seattle, like the San Juan Islands and stuff, uh, I'm limited to the paint that I can buy. So usually I'm narrowed down to a manufacturer. But again, I will go into the store, I'll check at the manufacturer, who the manufacturer is, I'll, and I'll usually pick the best, if not the second best line to choose my paint. Another thing to keep in mind is I would not recommend using a vinyl acrylic paint. Uh, I would recommend using 100% acrylic paint. Uh, it's just a higher quality, it's going to cover better. And vinyl acrylic paints can have a problem if you use a lot of the processes that I do on this channel. And the main one is taping up, right? I, of all the things you take away from my channel, to me it's taping up. I could to create really clean straight lines. The problem is if you use a vinyl acrylic paint, it's more rubbery, it's more like a caulk. So when you go to pull the tape, and it can have a tendency to sheet off or be rubbery, you know, and it won't break. 100% acrylic paint, when you pull the tape, it will break better. So, and it's just a better quality paint, so I would recommend using that. And you can also use other places, you know, Consumer Reports puts out some good stuff. I, I, they do tests to show, you know, what, what's work. Um, I personally, again, I would not buy an inexpensive paint. Uh, one thing you could do if you're in a really tight budget and you want to use a really good paint is you could go to the paint store and see if they have mist tints. Now you're limited, it's usually just one gallon of one color and sometimes you're limited in the sheen, but you know, it's, it, it's usually half the price, at least half the price, maybe a lot less than half the price of, the, uh, of retail. And when you go to purchase your paint, I'd really recommend asking for a discount. Now, this probably won't happen at Home Depot or Lowe's, one of those big, large box retail outlets. But if you're at Ace or True Value or uh, Do It Best, ask them. And certainly ask for Benjamin Moore outlets, Sean Williams outlets, Kelly Moore outlets, ask them. They should absolutely give you a break on the price. Now, another thing to do is if you know a contractor or an architect or an interior designer who has an account at one of these stores, ask if you can use their account. I'm not suggesting that you run up their bill, of course, but you'll have to pay cash for it at site. But you should save 
you should save about 20. I think I save, for Benjamin Moore, I save about 25 to 35% off of retail. And that's a, that's a great deal, okay? But if you go to places like Home Depot and Lowe's, you can't lose on the price there, right? They buy in such, in such large quantities that you get a great price, break on the price anyway. All right, uh, if you like this video, I hope you think about giving me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, I hope you think about subscribing. Okay, thank you very much.